all television and radio stations in the United States will now cease their regular programming. As you can see in the January 15th post on Mark13News.com, Trump signs Phase 1 China Trade Pact. Meanwhile, the TPP makes promising start. That's an article out of New Zealand. NAFTA 2.0 on accelerated path to approval. NAFTA being called the means to create a new world order by Henry Kissinger in 1993. And the Senate passed NAFTA 2.0 on January 16th. And as you can see on the President of the Council on Foreign Relations Twitter feed from January January 19th, the U.S.-China relationship will more than any other determine the shape of the 21st century, the same CFR doctrine going back to the 60s vocalized by Kissinger, 1969 being when Kissinger became Nixon's national security advisor going to Beijing in 1971 with diplomatic relations between the United States and China being normalized by another CFR member, Cyrus Vance, Carter's Secretary of State, Carter's national security advisor was of course, the big new Brzezinski, and with all the latest engineered tension in Iran, it's worth looking into the people responsible for Iran in its current forum. The Islamic Republic of Iran, that is to say, and the big three globalist tacticians of the 20th century were at the very least directly involved in muscling Carter into allowing the Shah into the United States, according to Carter himself, who wrote in his book, White House Diary, April 9, 1979, David Rockefeller came in, apparently to endorse me to let the Shah come to the United States. Rockefeller, Kissinger, and Brzezinski seem to be adopting this as a joint project to be used later, now that is to say, to draw the United States and China closer together, giving Russia no choice but to join, as pointed out by Brzezinski in 2017. Remember, Kissinger warned of increasing tension between the U.S. and China back in November, just before the unprecedented joint naval drills between Russia, China, and Iran, and then out of the blue, the death of the so-called shadow commander, followed by absolute media chaos and a cyclone of misinformation, including people erroneously saying that this has something to do with Daniel Chapter 8, but the ram in Daniel Chapter 8 is not modern-day Iran, but rather Ephraim and Manasseh, the British Commonwealth, as well as the United States, having not only to do with the world wars and the formulation of the United Nations, but also the breaking of the United Nations, which is the great horn of the he-goat, as you can see in Daniel Chapter 8, verse 8. And once that's accomplished, the new world order will emerge, the political beast of Revelation chapter 13, having seven heads, which means the seven continents of the planet Earth. And after the deadly wound written of in Revelation chapter 13, Satan will appear as Antichrist, called in Daniel chapter 10, the prince of the kingdom of Persia, because at that time, at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial, most Christians will worship Satan instead of the true prince of peace, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Christian nations being what Persia in Daniel chapter 10 is symbolic of in the ultimate future ascent.